Welcome back to another episode, Young Nomad Style, guys and girls, where our motto is live, live free. free, and that's exactly what we're doing. We are it's literally finally here. <laughs> today is T minus zero days till we depart to do our great trip around Australia, living, working full time from our caravan. How are we feeling, girls? Excited. So excited. Pump. It's been a long time coming. Yeah, it's We've been, been a... counting down the sleeps as well. We're like no sleeps this morning so that was so good it's been a hectic hectic couple of weeks packing up the house our lives thank you for everyone for your support we've loved uh, all the messages and the comments if you haven't already make sure you subscribe smash that bell so you get notifications because we've got some epic epic content coming up we're going to be vlogging and showing you real and live and raw what it's like to be a family, a working family, working and living on the road as we travel Australia full time. Um, in this episode, we're headed off to Port Gibbon. Um, so we've got to fuel up, we've got a few little things we just got to do, fill up the gas bottles, um, but we've got about a six hour drive to get to Port Gibbon. We're there for four days, um, and then we're off to Elliston, which will be the next episode after this. So on this episode, we'll show you all the sights and scenery and what's on offer at Port Gibbon, uh, what's on offer around Port Gibbon, uh, Port Gibbon itself, it's a beach site camp. We're going to be right on the water. Weather's looking pretty good tomorrow, so might even have an opportunity to drop the line in, hopefully. But main thing is just settling in, finding our feet as we prepare. Now, this is going to be an off-grid campsite, so we're straight into it. Uh, we've been parked out the front of my dad's, as you can see here, for the last two weeks, living out of the caravan. We had a wedding last night, a funeral the day before, a netball grand final, packing up house and home in our lives. But here we are. The trip, the destiny has finally arrived. You! All right. So excited. Kick, kick back, relax, and enjoy our Australia adventures. And on this episode, Port Gibbon. Here we go. Peace. Okay, so as you come along Beach Road, uh, Cowl is that way uh, to the south. As you drive along Beach Road heading towards Port Gibbon, there is a uh, camp fee pa uh, pay station here, as you can see, where we're located. So, you got $10 per night, 50 bucks per week, 14 night maximum limit. Must have fully self-contained toilet facilities camping along uh, Port Gibbon here as well. So I'll just move my shadow out so you can hopefully see that. And then yeah, it's just a matter of... Got your permit cards in there. Fill out your information. That then gets stuck onto your window of your vehicle. So you put in name, vehicle registration, date from, to, total number of nights. We're just gonna pay, we'll probably be here for about four nights, but we're just gonna pay for the week, put the 50 bucks in. You put your money in the yellow envelope, and then you just drop that into here as well. So, yeah, weather's absolutely turned it on for us as well, as you can see. The next few days are looking at mint. Uh, mid to high 20s, and the winds aren't too bad, so we'll see if we get the tinny in. Just need a few days to chill out. Obviously it's day one of our Australia, nothing Australia adventure, so just want a few days to ease into it, relax, kick back, we'll get set up. Um, it's been a long day, we've probably been on the road six hours, but the reason we've done a long haul is because we just wanted to get past Wyala, because we've done pretty much everything pre wyala Not much more there we need to see, and Fort Gibbon's a place we haven't stopped, seen, or visited before, so this is our first time here, so really excited. Wife is taking care of the payment. She's the uh, financial controller. And uh, we're good to go. Here we go. All right, so we uh, just come down to the beach for a bit of a beach session. It's a beautiful day. It's supposed to be 28 today. Um, the sunrise this morning was unbelievable. I'll drop some pictures down below of that when I took the dogs for a walk just as the sun was coming up over the horizon. Wife's on the beach with the babies. Happy days and uh, Demi's in the water as always. So I'll swing the camera around. This is Point Gibbon Beach along Point Gibbon Road. Fairly easy coming in, didn't take us long. It's just corrugated road straight in. It's jam packed. As you can see, there's heaps of caravans all up and down the coastline here. You've got the boat ramp just down there. So you can launch your boat off of here as well. 
Um, and uh, yeah, easy going, easy getting in. You got 4G Telstra reception as well, which is pretty good. I've just set up the wideband antenna, so I'll take you on a tour of that little setup with the 5G Nighthawk Telstra. I've done a previous episode on that, but I'll show you it in full flight here, set up off grid. Um, they put in some new toilet and shower blocks, but these ones aren't functioning. So I believe there's some closer towards Port Gibbon. So we'll head in there, just have a look around. Um, but today's just a kickback, relax family day Sunday. So we've got T-bone steaks tonight. We'll take you up to the campsite a little bit later on. We'll show you around there. Pretty much this coastline all along here, you can see there's uh, Port Gibbon Road just runs behind that. Very easy, straightforward to get into. So anyway, the little cherub, she wanted me to get some footage of her playing and swimming in the water. So dad's got to do what a dad's got to do. It was really calm here this morning. The wind's just kicked up a little bit, but not too bad. 10 knots, 12 knots, thereabouts. So, um, I went for a walk further down here this morning. Went for about a half hour walk with the dogs. There's a cool little point out there. Nice little sort of secluded rock beach there in between the rocks. We'll go there for a little bit later, have a look around there. Um, we're just gonna see if we can get some showers in town somewhere because I did see somewhere on an episode someone camping here for a gold coin dollar you can get shower so I think that shower block where we are is new it's not ready yet uh, but there's definitely one that's been established I believe unless those are the ones and they've been being refurbished anyway here is our little squidling yeah. you having a good time yeah. how's the water is it warm yeah it's nice when you get used to it <laughs> Ah. Bit of an eagle ray just there, swimming through. All right, so we've just come into Port Gibbon. Um, if you follow Port Gibbon Road back into Port Gibbon from where we're camping, um, to the right hand side, you've got Port Gibbon Caravan Park, which this is it really. There's not much to it. It does have a dump point, which is great. But yeah, it's got the showers here as well. Um, so dollar coin, note, only dollar coins. If you've got $2 coins, don't worry about bringing them. It only accepts $1 coins. Now you can actually stay here in Port Given Caravan Park. There's a cool little playground there. I'll go for a walk in a minute. Uh, here's the park fees. So you've got $15 per night here or $75 per week, 14 night limit to stay in the actual Port Given, Port Given Caravan Park. So we'll go for a little walk anyway, have a look around. I was just having a cold beer, waiting for the girls under the tree there. Nicely shaded. Dogs are in the back of the car. They're absolutely stuffed from uh, running around, swimming and all the good stuff today, chasing ball. And um, yeah. This is a little playground. There's no power here, by the way, I'll point out. So um, 15 bucks a night, you're still off grid. Obviously got rubbish facilities. Uh, good to know from where we're camping, three Ks, we can come here and we've got a little toilet dump point as well, which is cool um, because a couple of girls on board, we know how quickly that can fill up as well. But you can see, we just got the water line just pretty much here. So straight to the water there and then you've got to 
bait cleaning table over here as well. Oh, sorry, fish cleaning facilities over here as well with water and tap. So, but that's it. That's Port Gibbon Caravan Park. Okay, so I've had a lot of people ask us about our um, technology setup. How do we get 4G, 5G um, coverage to work remotely online? So I did an episode previously on this where I unpacked the Nighthawk 5G Telstra modem router. Um, I just wanted to show you the full setup now, I guess you could say. So I'll just flip the camera around and then what I'm gonna show you is some actual live speed tests. So you can see behind me, We've got the telescopic pole that is seven meters in height in total, as you can see. Now that's the wide band receiver, right? So that is via line of sight. I'm gonna show you exactly how I've lined that up, line of sight from the caravan. Now that comes with a telescopic mounting bracket that just bolts straight onto your A-frame or wherever you see fit. Um, I was going to put this on the back of the van, but unfortunately it just didn't bolt onto the rear bar, so that's where it had to go. And then we've got coaxial cable that runs here into two points. Both upload, download. So what I had to do, when I got this van, it only had the two coaxial endpoints. Um, one for satellite dish which we've got, and one I think is for Foxtel or something else anyway. Um, so when we got this, unfortunately, because I do have a satellite dish, I haven't plugged it in yet, because we're mainly using this technology. We're getting 4G here. At the moment, I'm getting between 27 to 28 megs download. We're getting around 22, 20 meg upload. I'll do a live speed test for you so you can see for yourself. So hopefully um, it holds up, but they were the speeds I was getting earlier today with this setup. And I did a test from my phone when I wasn't connected to the Nighthawk router and I was getting about 10 meg less directly to my phone, 4G um, uh, download, 10 meg less than what I was getting plugged into the line of sight wideband receiver to the modem router as well. But yeah, what I had to do here, obviously because of the satellite dish, unfortunately I couldn't plug the satellite dish in here because we've got the, both in for the uh, wideband receiver for upload and download. So what me and the old boy did is we made another mount up here, which is right behind our TV. Um, and this is where the satellite dish will plug into. So if we want to get um, satellite TV, we still can. Um, so that's it, you can see it stands out. You won't lose your campsite because you've always got line of sight pole. Um, so I'll just show you, I'm gonna just chuck, chuck his on the fridge here so I can show you a live test. So you can see for yourself. Alrighty. Okay, so here we go. I've just moved the uh, antenna around a little bit using the, um, the Oz Phone Towers app. Now pretty much I am directly in line of sight as per the app's instructions. So that's why a line of sight is super, super important. And being, you know, a few degrees off could be the difference of five, 10 meg difference, both upload and download. So let's jump back onto the Telstra app and do a speed test. Now this is live folks, so hopefully you can see this and hopefully it can reach from the wireless modem router. Wow, already a massive difference, look at that high 30s 42 megs yep 45 okay so far 44.6 meg download and 26 27 28 there's the final results folks 44.5 megs download, 28.1 megs upload. Not bad, pretty phenomenal to be honest with you considering we're off grid camping here. Um, we're a good 20 plus Ks from a regional township. Um, and it just shows you with that wideband antenna on the telescopic pole, seven meters in total it's uh, stretched out to. 
that has helped the speed by 10 to 15 megabits difference and more above just uh, line of sight, off line of sight. Um, and the right direction makes all the difference. So hopefully that helps you guys and girls understand a little bit more about the technology we've gone for our data needs whilst traveling. If you've got any questions or comments, always drop them down below. Love to hear from you, always get back to you. We're gonna chuck on some steaks, it's dinner time. Here we go. All right, so I'm no chef by any means, but one thing I can cook good as the wife would vouch for is a good T-bone steak. T-bone steak, veggies tonight, with a backdrop like that. Doesn't get any better. We'll send the drone up soon, we'll get some pictures. Hopefully we get a sunset, bit of cloud covers come over, but we'll send the bird up and see what we end up with tonight. Sunset over the land, sunrise tomorrow over here. So we'll send the bird up tomorrow morning as we'll hopefully get a nice sunrise for you. How's it looking in there, love? Good. Ooh, have a look at that. Steak night, great night. everyone it's um 6 30 in the morning we're up bright and early just trying to keep it quiet because there's people camping nearby but we're hoping to get some drone footage of the sunrise over there so um, it is a bit cloudy a bit overcast we'll do our best you can see the colors already starting a lot of orange there so sit tight hopefully we get some good footage of the sunrise this morning for you Ew.
Okay, so it's a, another terrible day in paradise, as you can see. We've just come into Arno Bay late afternoon. Uh, just have a look around here. We're not stopping here for uh, an overnight stay, so just a quick little afternoon trip. Um, Arno Bay is just literally the township's there. There's a pub there, and there's a uh, camp stay just behind there. I believe it's free as well. Uh, we'll have a look at that a little bit later. But we've just come down to the end of this road here, and you've got this beautiful little... Uh, salt water estuary almost that's coming in from the uh, the creek mouth uh, so we're just going to go for a little bit of a walk you can see there um, it's a boardwalk so you can go left at the end of this road to access the creek mouth about a 700 meter walk and then there's a mangrove walk as well uh, boardwalk walk which will take you on as well and um, yeah let's get underway look how clear that water looks absolutely stunning might even jump in for a dip. Anyway, here we go. We're off to the creek mouth and uh, let's see where this um, takes us to. And then we'll just show you some little sights around Arno Bay. Um, and then we will head to Cow. There's some silo art there that we'll share with you guys and girls. Uh, cool little township. Very busy at the moment though, actually. The Cow Caravan Park, Foreshore Caravan Park, absolutely chockers, booked out. And there's lots of tinnies and lots of boats out. So as you come along the boardwalk, there's these really cool fish and bait tables that they make here you can see good little platform to fish off tides out at the moment but they've been fishing with cockle yeah you can see good little bait board slow tide at the moment but you can see in the middle there it drops off just even fishing here is just peaceful even if you didn't catch anything okay yeah. I just want to go swimming. We're not in a beach. I want to go in the pool. Come on! All right, so we just got to the uh, end of the mouth uh, boardwalk and have a look at this absolutely pristine there's this beautiful shallow clear water here uh, it's probably about knee deep height maybe a little bit over knee deep height and then you've got a bit of a sandbar out there but it's all shallow through here perfect swimming for the kids we uh we just had a dip didn't we yeah we didn't bring our bathers we didn't even bring our bathers we just thought we'd come down here have a look at arno bay for a walk but Sometimes you just got to be spontaneous, don't you, love? Yeah. Your zinc's gone? No, because it won't work. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, highly recommend this as a good little, just, what, drop off and, yeah, dip. It's only 700 metre walk. It's not too far. Uh, we'll drop some uh, drone footage after this so you can see the girls splashing around and having a bit of a dip, but how good's the water quality? Oh, Feeling amazing. good? Salt is good for the soul. But this is what it's all about, isn't it? When you go travelling, you find little spontaneous spots like this and you just make the most of it. Yeah. And I said to Demi, you know what? Life's too short. Let's just get in there. Let's just take, wear what we've got on yep. or underneath and go for a swim. And we did, so. Bras, knickers, jocks, everything, <laughs> we're in there. Doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> How do you find it, sweetheart? You enjoyed that? Happy days? You got salt in the skin. Didn't get your hair wet though. Breeze through the hair. Have a look at that for a backdrop though. Unreal. The and the dogs have had an absolute ball. There's the mouth up there that goes into that little creek stream there. And I'll show you the puppies because they're absolutely buggered now. Two days of beach going running around. Hey, Max, Charlie, how you feeling? <laughs> Better now? Hey, bud. You're excited, hey? aren't you?
just on the outskirts of Cow here and uh, something that you must stop off and see to really appreciate the quality and the detail is this silo artwork behind me. Um, this is literally just on the outskirts of Cow, just right next to the uh, next to the highway, but absolutely picture perfect. And uh, I'll show you, I'll read you a little bit of the history behind it, but uh, yeah, you got the beautiful colors the black and white which talks about the history the past as well blended in with the current colors the pinks sun is setting one of the most picturesque silo artwork that i've seen there's a cool little park here as well oval so mel's just taking the dogs for a bit of a run but uh i've seen a lot of silo artwork in my time and that's right up there with the most picturesque um, just to the left hand side you've got a bit of sign here that tells you about the history which you can actually read about as well and then the black and white feature in this piece to represent the past the features in color represent the essence of what remains okay folks this is our last night in Port Gibbon it's been an awesome what have we been here Saturday Sunday Monday Tuesday four and a half days thereabouts Tomorrow onwards to Port Lincoln. We're there from Wednesday through to Monday, and then we're off to Coffin Bay after that. So uh, on this episode, obviously we're gonna show you and share with you and hopefully you enjoy the beautiful sights and scenery of Port Gibbon, Arno Bay and Cow. Um, this, this episode's more just to relax, getting into the feel of living out of our caravan, the Jansons full time, as we uh, start our adventure being, living, working full time on the road. Um, we're in Port Lincoln. We've got a few little things to do with the caravan, 12 volt, a few little upgrades. Um, I'm catching up with a, a, a mate and a, an associate, James Stacey, so looking forward to seeing the big fella. Um, then we're off to Port, uh, sorry, off to Coffin Bay. So in the coming episodes, I haven't done any fishing yet, but I'm keen, I'm frothing to get the rods and reels wet and out and unpacked. So uh, we'll definitely be launching the tinny off Coffin Bay. Um, know a couple of good spots and ledges around there. Um, so in the coming episodes you're going to see for you fishers more fishing content coming up absolutely um, and then we're off to Elliston for Easter period we're there for about eight nine days and then from there we'll be headed over to Palubi and then uh, eventually across the Nullarbor but I just wanted to jump inside last night before we pack up tomorrow morning to head to Lincoln and I'll just show you what uh, the wife and the little ones up to they're cooking away inside making a very special feast for us tonight I tell you what, we're going to eat like absolute kings. Let's just jump inside and just show you what the wife's making. Hello. What are we up to? What are we cooking in here? We're What's the dinner? We're making Demi's favourite. What is it, darling? <laughs> okay. For the viewers that maybe can't see but can hear. Demi. What? Silly with it. What are you eating? She's sushi. eating sushi. Sushi. You're one of your favourites. Mm -hmm. We've got tuna her, sushi. One of her favourite foods. So we've made some tuna, um, which I pre-made earlier. It'd be good if, you know, you got this like 20 minutes ago. Oh, <laughs> the before. This is the during. Yeah, so I made some um, tuna mixture and it's got mayonnaise in there. Yep. It's one of Demi's favourite foods. She has it just about every day. And just about on everything. Could do. And if, if there was no bread or like wrap or whatever, she would literally eat that from out the container. She's obsessed with uh, tuna. It's one of her favorite foods. But we decided to do tuna today, something a bit easier for the night before leaving. Um, well, don't you mean sushi? And if, we, if we've got a, like some stuff left over, we might have some <coughs> for tomorrow as well. So uh, really simple to make. Just need some sushi. Uh, what do you call it? Sushi seaweed? Yep. Seaweed. You can get it from the supermarket in the Asian section. You can pretty much get all of this stuff from the Asian section. Yakinori for sushi. Oh, um, bento. You can get these as well, which is located in the same area, and that helps you just roll it up. You need a bit of water um, for your mm. rice because it can be quite sticky, so once you wet your hands and grab the rice, it's easier to manipulate onto the bit of uh, seaweed. And I've chopped up some cucumber as Yay. well, which I did earlier. I pre-prepared all this earlier while I had some time. Yep. 
and Chris and I are going to have some teriyaki chicken. Show so us I've it. got that marinating in the fridge at the moment. Show us the chicky chicky. I've got it in here. Oh yeah, that's, so that's the good That's been stuff. marinating for most of the day. What sauce is it marinating in? Teriyaki. Teriyaki. Um, Very good. No, that sounds like. And we're going to have ours with avocado and cucumber as well. Unfortunately, we didn't get any um, soy, soy sauce. sauce. That's all right. We're going to Lincoln. Because you can't have sushi without soy sauce, but we'll make do. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll see. But we've got a bit of Kewpie mayonnaise, which is one of Demi's favorite mayonnaises. She has it on just about everything. Um, that's what they call what the secret sauce. The secret sauce. Kewpie. Secret sauce. Kewpie. So, um, yeah, that's cool. what we're having for dinner. Alrighty. Excellent. Well, that's it for this episode, folks. Thanks for joining us. And like I said, in the next episode, we're going to be heading off to Port Lincoln, sharing all the sights and scenery and cool stuff to do around there. Port Lincoln National Park, we'll be sure to get in there as well. Um, we're staying at the Port Lincoln Tourist Park, mm -hmm. which is right on the water. So again, it'll be more family oriented stuff, lots of swimming, lots of cool fun activities. We are doing something really special, which I can't announce and I almost yeah. slipped up before because we're surprising Demi. It involves a big boat and a big trip on a boat to an island. That's all she knows. So yeah, fishing, yeah. charter Maybe. boat fishing. Maybe. No. Kangaroo Island. There might be an opportunity. We're going the opposite direction to Kangaroo Island, darling. Mm. Still. Well, Kangaroo Island's back that way. <laughs> so yeah there's going to be something really cool and special that we're going to share with you on our port lincoln adventures so as i said if you haven't already make sure you subscribe hit that bell so you get all the notifications and uh look forward to hearing from you drop your comments questions down below we'd love to hear from you but until port lincoln bye for now